Yeah, hi. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series of videos on linear programming. And so uh, in this topic, we're going to talk about uh, linear programming. And uh, programming it doesn't mean that we're going to be programming things, but it means this is a, a an optimization technique for solving problems. Uh, so I'm going to give you an introductory, start with an introductory example, uh, then talk about the general form, I talk about some approaches to solving LP problems, talk especially we're going to talk about the simplex method, its setup, talk about maximization, minimization problems. I want to talk about sensitivity analysis, which is really very important. Uh, and which means if we change some parameters, what happens to the solutions? It's like what if analysis. And then I want to talk about integer programming uh, when some decision variables are integers, what we can do. Okay, so these are basically the uh, primary ideas of linear programming. Uh, the best way to start is to throw an example so we get some ideas fixated. <coughs> so here is uh, a it's, uh, a snowmobile example. Uh, suppose the vice president of a manufacturing company wants to know the profit maximizing, maximizing product mix between two models of snowmobiles. Uh, she is responsible for manufacturing. Uh, here we have the information. So we have model one and model two. These are the labor requirements. We have four departments that are needed to produce these models and these are the capacities available. So in, in the first department we have 300 hours per day available. In the second department we have 540 hours per day available. 440 in the fourth department and 300 in the fourth department. To build model one I would need two hours from first department don't need second department. I need also two hours from the second department and 1.2 hours from the fourth department. To build model two, I only need what I need to do, to use three hours from the second department, two hours from the third, and one and a half hours from the fourth department. And I cannot exceed these requirements. So this is what's available to me. Uh, the model one are sold gives me a unit profit of fifty dollars uh, model two gives me forty dollars profit so what should how many model one snowmobiles and model two snowmobiles should i produce to maximize my profit so we're not going to solve the problem we're going to formulate it as a mathematical model so it becomes ready for solution and so if we learn how to model so the building the model is the most important piece here not the solution because if the problem is much larger then getting an intuition solu intuitive solution becomes much harder so here is how we formulate the problem first piece is we want to what are our decision variables and so our decision first we're going to decide x1 is Num uh, number of unit ones to produce x2 is number of unit two to produce you have two decisions to act on which is the number of your model one and model two to produce or, or sh these should be really called production rates per day uh, because they, they we can have fractions so if we don't finish a model at the end of the day it means we completed the second day Second thing we want to decide is the objective function. What's our objective? Uh, in this case, we want to maximize profit, call it Z, the total profit derived from X1 and X2. So it's maximize 50 X1, how many models we produce, and $50 per each model, plus the number of models we produce multiplied by uh, the unit profit. So that's 50 X1 plus 40 X2. Now we also have these constraints because from here it says I cannot exceed 300 hours but in this case I use only model 1 so 2 times x1 should not exceed 300 3 times x2 should not exceed 540 
in this case I this department uses both models so that should be 2x1 plus 2x2 should not exceed 440 and the same thing here 1.2x1 plus 1.5x2 should not exceed 300 uh, so that's 2x1 less than or equal 300 to x2 less or equal 540 and see how we arrange them so we can see where the variables go third constraint 2x1 plus 2x2 less or equal to 440 and this one here 1.2x1 plus 1.2x2 less or equal to 300 so that means department requirements or resources are not exceeded also I need another condition which is called the non-negativity constraints which means I cannot produce negative number of snowmobiles. So x1 should be greater or equal to 0, and x2 should be greater or equal to 0. OK. Uh, so formulating an LP, as a summary, involves identifying four elements, decision variables, objective function, constraints, and non-negativity constraints. So please go back to this model, review it, make sure you understand the formulation before you proceed. Uh, now we have formulated the model. Uh, we are going to solve it. And the first attempt at solving it, we're going to use the intuitive approach. Because this is really two decision variables, a few constraints. So we can solve this one without any software. And basically, if we look at this problem, we notice that the first uh, model gives us a higher unit profit. So the idea is I want to produce as many unit one as possible and use whatever leftover resources to produce unit two or uh, snowmobile two. So that means uh, my, from my, my first department allows me to produce as many as 2x1 less or equal to 300 so x1 can be as high as 150 uh, my second department really have no restriction as far as this concerned I can produce infinity my third department if I ignore x2 I can produce as many as 220 so I just take 220 divide uh, 440 divided by 2 and the third one I make this 0 and divide 300 by 1.2 and that allows me to produce also a number which is 250 so if I solve these constraints x1 will be less or equal to 50 this means x1 can be infinity the third constraint x1 is less than 220 and the last one test gives me the constraint x1 less than 250 so if I look at these ones, uh, constraint 1 is the most limiting. So it's a binding constraint and I can't exceed 150. So if I produce 220, the first department will be uh, availability of hours will be violated. So the maximum I can produce is 150. Now with x1 equal 150, I can go back and determine x2. And the idea is I go back here. Uh, there's no x2 here so as far as this one x2 can be infinite uh, this one I solve it by there's no x1 here so by dividing 540 over 3 I get the limit on x2 here I substitute x1 as 150 and find what x2 should be same thing here I substitute x1 150 so if I do that I got for second constraint I got x2 less or equal to 80 so 2 times 150 plus 2 x2 less or equal to 40 you solve you get x2 is less than or equal to 70 and the last constraint that's 1.2 times 150 plus 1.5 times x2 and so that gives me x2 less or equal to 80 and I notice here that x2 less or equal to 70 is, this, is the most limiting, so I cannot exceed that. If I go here, that means this constraint will be violated. So that means x2 star, stars indicates optimality equals 70. So now with x1 equal 150 and x2 equals 70, 
my objective function would be 50x1 star plus 40x2 star I substitute x1 star 150 x2 star 70 I got ten thousand three hundred dollars which is nice but the issue here is this this intuitive approach doesn't always work so if you think of three or four or five decision variables like five different snowmobile models with all the restrictions I can put in uh, this method will not always work okay uh, so before we proceed with uh, other methods uh, we're gonna say now we have a model we know how to solve it how do we get a general formulation for this model so in general really we can either maximize profit or minimize cost so we say optimize the coefficients we have the decision variables and we can have as many as we want we have n here and the coefficient of each decision variable we call it cj which can be uh, profit or cost and the constraints the coefficients of each of the decision variables in the constraints I want to call it AIJ and the constraint can be less or equal equal or greater or equal the only one the ones we did were less or equal and this is the resource available the right hand side we're going to use B for that so these are my constraints and I can have as many as M of them and then I have my non-negativity constraints uh, so it looks complicated so I want to rewrite this in the form uh, for the example we had so in our model we would say maximize c1 plus c1 x1 plus c2 x2 in general subject to a11 x1 plus a12 x2 less or equal to b1 a21 x1 plus a22 x2 less or equal to b2 and so on b3 b4 so notice that c1 and c2 will always refer to the coefficients in the objective function b1 b2 b3 will refer to the right hand side of the constraints and the AIs, AIJs will refer to the coefficients here in the constraints. Typically, the, these ones don't change much because these are technology constraints. These ones can change. I can add resources or remove resources. I can also change the profit margin. I decide to re increase my price or reduce my cost and so on. So these can change frequently. These can change frequently these ones do not change frequently and this is very important when we talk about sensitivity analysis okay uh, so uh, just to help you understand this identify the C's the B's and the AI's and the in this model from the snowmobile example so like a12 would be zero in this case a21 is zero okay uh, so to be able to do and uh, one more thing is we can maximize in general we can maximize a problem we can minimize it uh, our constraints can be less or equal they can be equal they can be greater or equal and our non-negativity constraints they can be sometimes we can have negative constraints also and later on we talk about when the decision variables can be integer values uh, but before we get to that so we for linear programming and linear programming really refers to uh, linear optimization so for us to be able to use a formulate a problem as a linear program we need certain assumptions to be valid one of them is divisibility decision variables are continuous uh, it means they can be fractions uh, and so that's why we referred here to snowmobile production as rates because we allow uh, th say 70 and a half snowmobiles so we interpret that as that's the rate of production per day so if I had a half snowmobile completed one day uh, produced as uh, so I have a half snowmobile uh, at the end of the day it will be completed the following day okay so that way I would satisfy my divisibility assumption the second assumption is determinism which means my parameters 
or the coefficients are known with certainty everything is known here there's no sources of randomness everything is determined the third assumption is linearity is the objective function and the constraints exhibit constant returns to scale uh, which means I don't have in my variables any terms like x squared so if I look at my model I don't have x1 squared or x2 cube or log x or exponential of x and so on so everything is linear the fourth constraint is additivity no interactions among decision variables uh, the contribution of any variable is independent of the various values of the other decision variables which means I don't have x1 x2 so plus 3 x1 times x2 less or equal to this so there's no interaction or x1 square x2 and so on so with these when if these assumptions are valid uh, then I can use linear programming and uh, before I stop I want to talk about some of the applications uh, linear linear programming applications are are massive so linear, is, linear programming is one of the mathematical models that's used widely by business community here are a few applications I want to go quickly over uh, uh, often applied in resource allocation like the problem we talked about manufacturing finance advertising work training construction or refining transportation networks product mix uh, blending uh, what ratios of chemicals and the ingredients should go into making a blend of gasoline say to meet the requirements octane while min minimizing cost networks routing what is the best way to route the trucks in order to meet demand uh, how to best route uh, school buses scheduling how to schedule nurses say for in a hospital uh, what is the best allocation of police patrols in an area uh, location what are where fire stations should be located in order to provide adequate coverage Uh, so many problems lend themselves naturally to an LP formulation many others can be approximated closely enough to match the assumptions of an LP uh, efficient solutions and algorithms exist to solve LP problems and we can solve extremely large problems with thousands of variables and thousands of constraints computing makes this really easy uh, output from LP provides useful information to conduct sensitivity analysis if we use the, sensor, the uh, computer output we can easily conduct sensitivity analysis uh, if, if we use the simplex method to solve the problem so what which means if I can answer questions like what if I change a scenario I change a resource or my cost changes or my profit changes how I can adjust to that okay so uh, next video we'll talk about requirements for an LP and take it from there uh,